Hello everyone, let's get started. Today I want to take a look at the cost of the whole system because there is many arguments that there will never ever be so much money to pay out retail investors at high price. I will be concentrating on two documents from Ripple, the XRP cost model paper, I will put the link into the description of this video and also the ripple vision from where I took the yearly cost of the whole system 1.6 trillion more or less on the actual cost paper there is cost model paper there are three models basically explained here you see um, economic implications of universal breaches that's the I think it's six points which uh, basically produce cost for nostros forex or for the current system foreign exchange currency hedging treasury operations liquidity payment operations and Basel 3 compliance um, here you can see a chart from the cost model paper if a bank is just using X current so they will save roughly 30% on current cost in this picture and this I will concentrate on they will save by using XRP at high volatility 40% however I want to stress that that Shane Ellis theory which is what I'm still believing in very strong stated that those mechanics with the bind cell walls will keep the, vol the volatility quite low so if we scroll down further and check on low volatility Ripple predicts even a 60% cost reduction okay now let's take a look at the numbers first I want to explain the figures I have taken from ledger exposed today about two hours ago um, the green marked area is all but the top three levels I've marked here bigger than two uh, bigger than a thousand XRP are all those accounts and I have marked here bigger than 10,000 are all those accounts on the top I on the bottom I have uh, added the total values how many accounts are in total how many XRP is available in total all but the top three level accounts in total the XRP in all but the top three level accounts and the XRP in all accounts which have more than a thousand XRP or more than 10,000 XRP but because the difference here is quite I mean it's about 10% but I think we can neglect those 10% so I'm concentrating basically on all XRP but the top three levels the top three levels more or less is um, exchanges and ripple itself you can actually see that where it's blue on ledger exposed you can click and then it usually lists the name so it's basically um, exchanges which uh, hold those values up there and I mean basically the exchanges will not really I mean maybe they will sell to the payment to those conducting payments as well but most likely it's not them okay now I've explained ledger exposed now let's look a little bit at the at the cost calculation I have done and I really um, want you to check those figures I will put the Excel uh, file in the in the description of this video so you can just 
check the, the figures and play around with those figures yourself just to get a feeling of the immense numbers we're, we're dealing here. So I will go quickly through, through the top rows and explain. Um, and I will explain why I will let explain that the uh, yearly global Swiss volume I'm assuming is about one a bit more than one quadrillion like five trillion a day for 250 days a year gives us about that number so here is millions billions trillions quadrillions okay then the cost on the on the transaction ripple basically describes in this table here the global average cost is about 20 basis points now a hundred basis points is one percent which gives us as as a, for the 20 basis basis points it gives us, I think I made a mistake, 100 basis points or a person. No, it's correct. So, that would be 1%. No, actually it's wrong to be like that. So the figure is actually even higher. Um, which basically invalidates my conversative estimate in Franken math because in the Franken math video I stated that I am assuming a worldwide cost of, of about um, 200 billion per year. Now Ripple themselves doesn't take this 2.5 trillion which would relate to these uh, 20 basis points they actually take these figures from this document is 1.6 trillion annually which is this cost now when we look at the two levels of uh, savings a company can make it's either 40 percent if xrp has a high volatility if we apply that on this 1.6 trillion we get this uh, 640 billion now in the theory of chain Ellis XRP will have a low volatility so basically the saving is would be around 60% even which is almost um, a trillion million billion right um, I will also again because you know me I'm usually taking the conservative figure so I'm basing my my calculations or my, my comparison below which I want to go through with you on the on the very conservative level now I have played through several scenarios okay let's assume XOP would get to a thousand dollar we have about 300,000 holders of XRP with more than a thousand XRP. If they would cash out, if each of them would cash out a million, that would be like half of that value of the cost savings. So they could even cash out two millions each of those 300,000 um holders with more than a thousand xrp and it'll still be a no-brainer if they want to if all of those three hundred thousand would want to cash out 10 million then it would take about five years is that correct right because we need to get a return on, on investment on that figure so this figure is about five times lower than that. So it would take about five years to get a return on investment. That's when we look at the amount of XRP. Now, a different perspective could be that we, that we check how much 
in total people who want to cash out. So if all of those with more than a thousand XRP at a thousand dollar per XRP would cash out, it would be 13 trillion. I always have to see million, billion, trillion. That's way too much. That's about uh, quite some like 20 times higher. So it would take about 20 years. So that wouldn't work. At 50%, we would still be like 10 times higher than the, than the yearly cost savings. So it would be like 10 years to get the return on investment. But I mean, who will cash out 50%? I mean, that's really up to you. I just give you the figures. You do your own interpretations on that. Now, if all those holders with more than a thousand XRP would only cash out 10%, then we would be in about two years in the, in the level of a return on investment. Now in this scenario from Galgitron, he is doing also very rough, very conservative estimation at hundred dollars. Now XRP holders, that's wrong here. That should be ten thousand XRP. There is like eighty six thousand. XRP holders with more than 10,000 XRP, which would give them at least a million at a hundred dollars. Okay, so if they cash out the million, we're like on 8 billion. Let's go back to the figure. The cost savings are 640 billion per year. So it's totally a no brainer. Actually, that I can make bold. Even if all these people would cash out 10 million, it'll still be a little bit more than the cost savings they would make at high volatility. But it would still be in range. I remember Shane Ellis' theory says the XP price would have low volatility. So in that range, it would totally make sense. They could even, all those 86, thousand could cash out 10 million and it would still be okay if you look the same again at the total amount of xrp less the top three levels which are exchanges and ripple themselves then we can see 50 percent or more of all those xrp at a hundred dollar could be cashed out and we would still be in less than a year on a return on investment at a hundred percent it'll take two years but i will tell you two years is even for a small to medium-sized company kind of a no-brainer usually they do investment calculations on a two to three year basis and here we're not talking about, I mean, sure, surely they will have a recurring cost for the licenses for the Ripple software, but uh, that'll be, I don't know, like 10%. So basically after the two years, they're basically just making profit. Okay, now I have put some other scenarios below, actually scenario three, four and five. Let's look at, at these. Here I did a kind of calculation what it would mean if the price would step, would rise in steps. So in my first scenario, I have steps at 10, 50, 100, 500 and a thousand dollar. And in each step, 20% of your remaining XRP you cash out, which gives us in each step an appropriate cost. Okay, so at $500, we're still like 
in the total here we're still in the in the green range for getting a return on investment below one or roughly in one year and even at a thousand dollar if it's like these three steps and each time 20% of the remaining XRP is cashed out we're still when we look at the total here it's like uh, two, it's like three years return on investment that's not too bad however I think 20% is rather a conservative figure now let's take a look at the same dollar values 10 50 100 500 and a thousand but this time with 30% cash out this obviously makes the system more expensive sure but there will be way less remainder XOP at the end in this scenario there's about 2 billion XOP less and in the previous uh, scenario was about 4 billion XOP left with the with those um, XOP holders now the last scenario we look at is a bit more aggressive I again have the same figures 10 50 100 500 and a thousand dollars but this time 50% of the of the holdings are cashed out of the current holdings so from the 13 million there will be a remainder of a billion there will be a remainder of 6 billion after the first step to 10% which would give us these costs if we then would have an additional step to 50 dollars the remainder would drop to 3 billion and the cost would be somewhere around here at hundred dollars that's actually an interesting figure because it's almost the same I have to check if no it looks correct that's coincidence maybe it's really interesting that these figures are identical um, anyway so in this example and, and here when we look it's like 1.2 trillion that would that if we go back to the to the cost that would give a return on investment on on in about two years and it would make it possible for each XRP holder on every level we reach at ten dollar fifty hundred five hundred a thousand cash out fifty percent of their XRP and with this I want to finish I want to I want that you contemplate those figures that you think about it that you criticize me about errors I'm doing check in the description of the video I will put an Excel file and a PDF and the links to those two documents from Ripple um, and remember that small to medium sized companies have a usual target for return on investment between two and three years whereas bigger companies usually have um, a return on investment period between three and seven years so uh, like the top 50 banks or maybe even the top 100 banks in the whole world for them even if it's even if they would bear the cost to pay us out if it's done in in two years if they after two years would actually have a return on investment it will still be an over you know? because usually they they do calculations between three and seven years thanks i'm looking forward for your feedback take care